Hey, it's so nice to see you all again. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you over the course of the semester. How's everyone's week been so far? Can I get a thumbs up, thumbs down? Good. Great. Yes, thank you for asking, Jenna. My week has been great so far as well. So since this is only our second class, we will be learning about something that you will benefit from for the rest of the semester. So what we're going to do now is just a little bit of a self-reflection. So first of all, who here thinks that they are not good at creating art? Or is scared to because you are scared of the mistakes that you might make? Who is scared of creating bad art? Who is scared of what others might think about their art? Now, I'm assuming this is going to be the majority of the class. What if I told you that the most important part of your artistic process are actually your mistakes and your experimentations? Yeah, <laughs> I know, shocking. The truth is that you should not be worried about what others think about your art, since there's no real way to measure perfection in art, completely based off of opinion. Often these fears are what ultimately stop us from even starting. I myself have even struggled with this. There are fears such as the fear of the blind page, not knowing where to start, and also the fear of not being able to capture the image that we have in our heads. These are all fears that get in the way of us making and creating art. So today we are gonna explore this further by learning to appreciate experimentation in our artistic process and learning to make our own mistakes into art. Today we will be learning about the technique of paint pouring. Has anyone uh, ever heard of this technique or even tried this before? Yeah, Mac, you've done it before? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, so you really enjoyed the process and you're looking forward to experimenting further with it. That's great. So for anyone who has never heard of it before, paint pouring is exactly like what it sounds. It consists of pouring paint on a canvas and then moving the canvas around to allow the paint to move and cover the whole surface of the canvas. Now, there are many ways to prepare the paint before you pour it, but today we will be experimenting with pouring several different acrylic paint colors into a plastic cup and then pouring it directly onto a canvas. So I know everyone has received their kit for this semester consisting of all the materials we will be needing for this activity, so that's great. In terms of setup, we'll go over that later on, um, but now we're gonna watch a video of the process. But before we begin, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, so we will get started. And at any point, if anyone wants to ask any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. And you can either type it in the chat, unmute yourself, or raise your emoji hand. Also, just a quick note, you'll have access to this video via Moodle, and it is also available on YouTube. So you are able to rewatch this. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. And just a heads up, I will probably be stopping it just to explain some things. So it's how it works. Perfect. All right, so before I let the video play, I'm quickly going to explain my setup. So first of all, I found some sort of surface like a desk or a table and covered it with plastic sheet, which you can find in your kit. And this just allows me not to be worried about making a huge mess and wrecking my table. I've set up on the side a bottle of white acrylic black and then three colors of my choice. Um, I definitely recommend using at least three colors. You might find different ones in each of your kits. Um, also, you do have three canvases. Please use the small one since this is our first time trying this process. Other things you will need is a plastic cup and a popsicle stick. Also, after doing this myself <laughs> and making a mess, um, I definitely recommend wearing disposable gloves if you do have access to them. All right, so step one. For step one, you want to cover your whole canvas in white acrylic 
and use your popsicle stick to spread it over your canvas as evenly as possible. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that. Just try to not leave big lumps of paint on your canvas. The next step will consist of taking one of your plastic cups and layering the paints inside of the cup. Now, as I'm sure you have noticed, or you will notice, I'm not pouring each paint in the same way. Some of them fill a whole layer of the color, and the others I just create a dot or create many different little lines. It's important that you experiment with this. You can layer your cup with many different shapes that you create with pouring the paint. Uh, you can even create lines. You can do anything you want. Try to really experiment with this stuff. So once you've filled about a quarter of your cup, you'll move on to step three. So step three is essentially pouring this paint directly onto your canvas. Now in this video, the way that I did this was in kind of a zigzag motion from one end of my canvas to the other. Now you don't have to pour it like this. You could pour one big blob in the middle or pour your paint in several separate lines. Again, it's completely up to you. So since this is my first time doing this, I did not know how much paint I actually needed to pour. So I ended up doing several pours. Now this was actually beneficial for me because it allowed me to experiment even more. But um, I'm not saying you have to do this. To do this, you could just do one pour. Once the majority of your canvas is filled, then you'll move on to step four, which is moving your canvas in different angles um, to allow the paint to move and spread and create new shapes and cover the rest of the canvas. Now, as you see, I really turn it in almost every single angle possible, and I kind of hold it there for a couple of seconds until I see the paint moving. Now, after that, um, there were still some white spots, as you can see. So I decided to pour even more paint. Now, when you're nearing the end, it's important to make sure all of the all of your negative space is covered, just because it uh, makes it look more complete. And also, you will see later on in the video, um, I noticed some um, white spots on the sides of my canvas. So what I ended up doing was just taking my finger and smudging some of the paint. All right, so my canvas is pretty much filled completely. And you can see how it overlaps even on the side of the canvas. So there I am using my finger, like I just said. Perfect. So this is my final product. Um, this is another one that I did as well. And you can see that I experimented in many different ways with all of these. Uh, yes, Martina, you have a question? All right, yes, that's a great question. Yeah, so they will take about 24 hours to dry. And once they do dry, you might find that they're not as shiny as you hoped. And this is because we did not mix anything with the paint. If you have any medium at home you would like to mix with your paint, feel free to do so. Or you could even paint it over top um, to make it look glossier. But this is not mandatory and this is completely up to you. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And um, if anyone has any questions, I will be here for the next 10 to 15 minutes. If not, you're free to go and try this yourself. The only thing that I ask is that you document either your process or your final product or both. This can be via a video like I've just shown you or through images, whatever is easier for you. Once you have completed this, I invite you to upload them onto our class folder for us to look at next class. You will also find a step-by-step -step guide with everything written up if you prefer that over uh, re-watching the video. And at the bottom of this sheet is a self-reflection, which I would like you to complete and send in with your images. All right, and that is all. I will be here if anyone wants to talk to me.